The Alur people predominantly live in Nebi and the newly created Zombo districts in the West Nile region of northwestern Uganda. However, the Alur also have a significant presence in neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. The coronation of Philip Olarke Rauni III has been 10 years in coming since the year 2000 after the death of his grandfather Valente Keroyoma Jobi II. On Saturday, Lay cultural site in Nebi district teemed with thousands of excited Alur and other people who came to witness the coronation of the king, referred to as Roth in the Alur dialect. And the royal to ascend the throne on this day is Philip Olarker Rauni III. Traditional leaders from other cultural institutions in Uganda, as well as those from neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, graced the ceremony. Then time came for the 29-year-old king, Philip Olarke Rauni, to make his grand entrance into the coronation grounds, accompanied by close relatives and family members. The chief guest is President Yoweri Museveni, who sits by and watches as the traditional Aguara dancers entertain the multitudes. Soon after the traditional songs, the people are treated to a slow ballad by Cora Awards nominee and daughter of the soil, Susan Kerunen, in her silky smooth voice. The elders then get down to performing the rituals that all Alur kings must be taken through before enthronement. They lift the king, who has lived in Britain for a decade, and place him next to this hut, known as Ot Tipu, where it's believed the ancestral spirits live. The king is then dressed in antelope skin, although in the past, kings were dressed in leopard skin on coronation. And these women were at hand to accord the king the respect that befits his lofty title. But as the ceremony proceeds, this woman apparently gets overwhelmed by the events and resorts to calling on Jesus, which is quite strange since many people believe that ancestors rule the occasion. The Alur elders commended President Museveni for restoring cultural institutions that were abolished by former President Milton Obote in 1966. They adorned him with antelope skin. The president was also given the name Jal Kunga, which means the person who has nurtured the Alur culture. And on his part, President Museveni urged the king to be at the forefront of the preservation of the Alur culture. The reason the NRM restored the cultural institutions was mainly because we wanted to preserve our languages and our culture. At the end of the ceremony, many people were clearly excited and danced to show it. However, my highlight of the day's events was getting up close to the king, something that was considered taboo just a few years ago. I'm very privileged to be standing next to Philip Olarke Rauni, the 33rd king of the Alur people. Congratulations, Your Highness. Thank you, thank you. How does it feel to lead such a big number of people at such a young age? Uh, it's overwhelming, but it's a task I'm willing to take on, and uh, it's one step at a time. Uh, and uh, this is a big step for us today, and I'm happy we have uh, managed to pull it off. And uh, I'm happy with the crowd, I'm happy with the people. I want to thank everybody who has uh, contributed, who has uh, 
uh, has, has, has worked tirelessly to make this day happen. Uh, but this is not the end of it, this is just the beginning. So from here it's now on to the next step. We see how we can go on to uh, bring a, a better change in our land and for our people. And I've also got the opportunity to talk to the permanent secretary of the Alur Kingdom, Mr. Gratian Ochamringa, who also happens to be my dad. Now, dad, what is the first thing that you are going to do as a kingdom for the Alur people? The first thing we're going to do for the Lord Kingdom is to see that we bring about development in our area, both in Uganda and in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Roth Philip Olar Kerr holds a master's degree in economics from Lowbury University in England, making him the most highly educated of all the 32 kings who have presided over the Alur Kingdom. Elders are still taking the king through the norms and traditions of the Alur people. This is to equip him with the requisite skills of leading his subjects in accordance with the age-old customs of his people. Now, to show their strong bond with the Alur kin in Uganda, the Congolese Alur sent a high-powered delegation of cultural leaders for the historic coronation. The Alur kingdom may not be as big and influential compared to, for instance, Buganda, Bunyoro, and Toro kingdoms. However, like we have heard from the king himself, the cultural institution is committed to improving the lives of the people. I am Chris Ochamringa for NTV Connect.